our, our population. So here are, I typically ask three questions. I, I belabored my poor students this past semester asking these questions on virtually a weekly basis. So these three questions are going to, by and large, determine how well we plan to address the evolving needs of our aging population. And when you're speaking to planners, when you say you plan to address, it doesn't mean you mean to address. It means you as planners, that's what you do. You plan. So how are you going to address these issues? Real simple. Where are all these older folks going to live? We just saw the places that aren't necessarily conducive to their healthy and successful living. So where are they going to live? And by they, by the way, I mean us. A lot of us already fall into whatever demographic, wherever you make the age cut off. There are a few of us in this room that are probably there already. And if we're not there yet, wait a few years. Substitute out they, talk about us. Where are we going to live? Second question, how are all these older people going to get around? Anybody want to be in a society where one out of five drivers is over 80? I know it sounds like Florida already, but uh, how are people going to get around? People who may not be capable of driving, perhaps ought not be driving. <coughs> what are we going to do? We're in a society where our fixed route rail is in desperate need of repair. Our buses, we're struggling to keep them up. Yet the population that we need to serve that needs to be moved around in order to maintain a healthy life, the problems are more compelling than ever before. How are we going to move these folks around? No other single issue do people bring to my attention. I was at a meeting, my, my buddy Joel back there and I were at a meeting up with some folks in Evanston this week. They called us in and said, our staff is getting absolutely absorbed by individual requests. I need to get to a doctor's appointment. How can I get there? Can you help me? It's taking up a third to a half of their staff time. With the platter of services, they spend a third to a half of their time answering a call from Rhonda one day and Joe the next morning and Edna the next afternoon. The issue is not getting smaller, it's getting bigger. Third question, what are going to be the nature of the communities in which all these older people live? What are the spaces and places going to be? The parks, the sidewalks, the streets, the roads, the, the open spaces, the shopping spaces, the shopping center. Think of it this way. When any of us is fortunate enough to get some time off and go on vacation, what are the sort of places we want to go? Sometimes we want to go and get away from cities and go you know, surfing or mountain climbing. If we want to go to a city, what sort of places do we want to go to? We generally want to go there because of certain things that they have. Maybe it's culture, maybe it's walkability, maybe it's architecture. How can we make the communities in which most of us live, let's save ourselves from having to go on vacation to go to nice, embracing communities. So those are the three questions. But let me refresh your memory on the objectives, or what I consider the objectives. In my mind, the objectives of this conversation are to help develop the ability of all people, people of all ages, with a specific focus on older adults. But let me interrupt myself to say most of what I'm talking about is not just what do we do for older folks. The walkable, connected communities with good housing, good transportation, and supportive spaces. Hey, that sounds a lot like where I would have wanted to live when I was deciding where to buy a house 30 years ago. These spaces and places are for all of us. And if they work for the old and they work for the young, they're probably going to work for the people in between. And I would submit the more we can think of this as partnerships and coalitions rather than us versus they, the more we're going to move things forward in the right direction. So how are we going to develop the, or how are we going to further the ability of people of all ages to live in areas that are age friendly? That term gets used a lot. I like it. I like it as an adjective, how to think of and develop cities. 
rather than think that if you do this and this and this, you're an age-friendly city and you can check the box and go off and do the rest of what you need to do. That are livable, sustainable, affordable, and healthy. I'm modest here. I'm not asking for much, am I? <coughs> And going back to those questions, how do we develop community-based housing types, transportation services, and open spaces and places that support this, this goal? So with those three questions, with these objectives in mind, let's add a fourth question. And that's where I'll be stopping shortly after this. So what role might advanced technology play? In other words, Enough of me talking at the crowd. Now I want the crowd to help inform me because by emission, technology has to play a major role. And I need to go to the technology and the data experts <laughs> and learn about the good practices out there or what's working in one arena that might be adapted for this arena. So, but a couple of things just to simply keep in mind. What we think about and talk about these issues, and, and Greg will talk more about these because he, he just knows more about these. Are these older adults the users or simply the subjects of this advanced technology? Important question. There are a lot of people out there trying to figure out ways to you know, facilitate this and develop businesses and products around this. But one key question, and I ask this question because I have an 83-year-old mother who can't answer her telephone. So let's be careful before we presume that all of the users are going to be so tech savvy that all we have to do is come up with great products and processes and everybody will just you know, adopt them and there we go. Which is basically the second point. Increasing numbers of older adults as we baby boomers are getting older. Yeah, I do know how to turn on and off my computer, but this cohort it includes a lot of folks who aren't tech savvy and technological. So let's be careful in what we in what we recommend. So the question was, how can older adults benefit from advanced technology? How can that help in the successful aging in their communities? Oh, excuse me. So what existing practices do we know of that we build upon and scale up? So let this be a rhetorical question. What do you think? Because rather than hearing your response, Greg's going to take it from here and when we're done, write down what you wanted to tell me and then we'll chat. 